<laughs> Hello, and excuse the little bit of echo. We're in the crypt. What can I say? Look who's here. I've got out the wardrobe. I've been in the wardrobe since February asleep, upside down. <laughs> and I've just got out, the sun's out. I mean, you know, so it's, uh, yeah, it's got it's, me up. We're filming Halloween on one of the warmest days of the year. What can I say? Um, yes, yeah, so we've, we've animated him, we've reanimated him just for this project. So, um, shall we get on? Yeah. In honour, <laughs> I've got my Lumos t-shirt. And I've got my Muggle t-shirt. Yes, and I've got my sorting hat on. Right, so without further ado, um, today we're going to be doing a Skull and Crossbones mixed media bottle. Oh. A bottle makeover. Away. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the bottle that we're going to be um, reinvigorating, turning into a spooky Halloween it's bottle. It. It, well, yes, it's been sat empty on top of the dresser in the kitchen for quite some time. So it's an empty whiskey bottle if you're interested, but it's flat. Can we just hold that up? Can you see how flat it is concerned, compared to how wide it is? I thought it was just the perfect kind of shape and size for a bit of a spooky makeover. So, we're gonna do a skull and crossbones on the front. Yeah. So, skull and crossbones, so we're going to need to cast a skull and two of these bones here. So, what we need to do then is we've already got some already done, and that's pretty much, they're two, obviously I can't cut those now because they're already done and cast. Yeah. Um, but to work out how much resin we're going to need, you just simply put those on the scales because they weigh the same dry and set as they do oh, yeah, when they're they do liquid. Help, yeah. So literally we just need to pop those on the scales, find out how much they weigh, and that's how, how much we know then how much to make up. Got you. So pop them on the scales then, mister. Okay, okay. New scales. Yes, brand new scales. 34, call it 34 grams. 34, so we're gonna need half of that. So 17 part A, 17 part B, which will give us the full 34. 17s and 17s. Lovely. Okay, so part A first. Part, so part A. 17, you said, didn't you? Yep. So this is the fast cast resin, which is the one-to-one. -one. So you just have to do equal weights. So there's no messing about with ratios. So 17 of one and 17 of another. Doesn't matter if you go a little bit over. 18. Yeah, doesn't matter if you go a little bit over. If you have a little bit left, it doesn't matter. It don't matter. 18, so 18, 19, so to 19 now. Right, so, so 38. 38. You can control it a lot more if you have it in a smaller cup. 39, but that doesn't matter. No, a little bit more harder than um, part A. Won't, uh, won't do any harm. Won't do any harm. All right, right, so then just decant it back into the bottle again. Hey, hey, proper decant. Because you can only decant a liquid, can't you? You can. Right. So decamp. <laughs> so then we just need to stir both parts together for approximately 30 seconds. Okay. So it's been about 30 seconds. Let me move around this way so you can see it going in. There we go. So it has a, a yellowish kind of milky consistency, almost like condensed milk, isn't it, Ian? Yeah, it is. And then... Let's let that do its thing. Dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones. Ooh, this okay. one as well? Yep, I we want you both of them. So this is normally um, demoldable. A little bit more maybe in the bone. The fact they score is a little bit more, oh, it's okay. not. Yep. Just a little bit around the edges, isn't it? That's it. Yep. Yep. A bit more in that one? Yep, a bit more in that bone there. A bit more on the other one. It's quite a bit left. Do you want me to do a, a side, side version of a skull? Yeah, or one of the smaller skulls. Front on skull. Uh, that one there. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. 
you can compare that to the skills that you use in your steampunk machines if you want. Oh. See what the uh, oh, there's not enough left anyway. It matter. Left, okay, so as I was saying, normally demoldable in about forty to forty-five minutes, but we want to demold it before then for a particular reason. But I'll explain that in a little while. Okay, so that's a bit of a close-up on the resin in the mold. So, like I said, we'll be back in about half an hour with that. So. While the resin is curing for the next 40 minutes, I'm going to try and cover the bottle with this fantastic tissue paper that we obtained when we went down to the Harry Potter experience in Watford. Oh yeah! Um, was it this year or last year? It was last year, wasn't it? Uh, or was it this year? February time this year? I can't remember. Anyway, I think it was recently, this year. It was within, this year. within the last 12 months anyway, yeah. um, I was supposed to have thrown all this away, but I couldn't bring myself to get rid of it. Um, so, seeing as we're Harry Potter in, um, and it, it's kind of spooky season, I thought we'd use this to cover the bottle. Said bottle, right, so I'll come down to there, but should we turn the fan off? That might be an idea, it's just going to blow It's not going to work, is it? Just for the time being, while we're doing the tissue. Yeah. So I'm going to take the stopper off. Okay. So I've got one little job to do first, so camera up. Yeah, it still smells of whiskey. It's got any water in it? Eh? Has it got water in it? It might have done, it was probably washed out. No, it's oh, dry. It's dry. Okay, so. So what we're going to do is we're going to decoupage with the tissue. So I'm going to rip up the tissue just into segments. And this isn't going to be the most interesting of um, activities. So literally just going to tear up the Harry Potter tissue. I know it's a sacrilege and there'll be people out there screaming, no, don't do it, but you know. Get your own tissue paper. You can't hoard forever. Oh, well, I, you know. right, I remember that when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, you can't hoard forever. So, uh, glue of choice. I have uh, first edition Deco Mache. Oh. Um, this is the matte. Yeah. Also comes in a gloss. We're going to paint it. You don't want gloss then, do so, you? No, so it makes no difference whether you use matte or gloss. So, I've that. just got to fight now to try and get the lid off. So... Do you want to just turn off the camera for okay. a second? We're back. We're back. Uh, glue, zero, mic, one. We got the top <laughs> off. So, so literally, all I'm going to do, I'm going to just start here. Yeah. Um, and just start slapping it all on. I don't, it, I don't remember it being this lumpy the last time um, I used this stuff. So it might just be the fact that it's, it's so crazy warm at the moment. Um, I just feel sorry for those people in the Mediterranean because that's where it's all centred. Okay, so I'm literally, I'm just going to take strips and cover the O of the bottle. Right. Should we come back to you when you've got a little bit more? I was going to say, can do. doesn't matter about wrinkles. It doesn't matter about bubbles. If it's wrinkles, they look like old leather, won't Well, it? this is it. See, the, the, the oldie worldy, the better error. Better error. Right. Okay. Well, right. we'll be back in a sec. Okay. Just once the once over. Okay, so we've got all covered now, are we? It looks as though I can't see any gaps. So it might be an idea just to lift it up to the window and just make sure that there's no... Sorry, I was down there then. Oh, the apple tree looks well, doesn't it? <laughs> Bit sidetracked there. Yes. Yeah, that looks like it's completely covered. Cool. Um, back onto me. There you Hello. Go. Um, so it doesn't really make any difference what tissue paper you use. You could just, you could use toilet roll, really, TP if you wanted to. Um, it's just with us having it and <laughs> I might as well. <laughs> well, it creases nicely, doesn't it, Tisha? I mean, this stuff does. This stuff does. I mean, this was literally wrapped around a couple of bits and pieces that were bought from the it shop was. in the store. Um, but didn't really want to throw it away. Didn't want to get rid of it just because of what it was. Yeah. So I always know that the tissue paper underneath the pane is, Harry is, Potter. is official, official Harry, Harry Potter, Potter tissue paper. Not just stuff that we bought from or got off the internet and printed. It's official Harry Potter merchandise, even though it is only tissue paper. Yeah, it looks cool, does that? Yeah, it's a shame you're just not going to see it. Fair enough. Okay. Wash the brushes. Yep. 
And so I'll wash this. Okay. And I'll then be we'll be back in a minute. It's time for demolding. Woo! So the bottle, just before you go, so that's pretty much dry now. Um, just while I was helping it upstairs with a heat gun, I kept looking at it thinking, do you know what? I think this is just too good to cover up so with paint. we're going to put a glaze on. I've got some Tim Holtz vintage, you know, the distress collage medium. Yeah. That'll give it that Ooh, kind be of nice. old brownie kind because of Because you'll still, still see all the detail. Exactly. So, right. But what I want to do is I want to try and... Oh, we're going okay, to... So, yeah. You see how these are still flexible? Oh, yeah. Bindy bobbly, yeah. Yeah. So what you can do is you can literally bend them... around your project like so just leave that for now yeah and then pop out the skull which is also quite flexible let's have a look so i just need to can shuffle just, these can I just come from there have a quick look oh okay okay so what i need to just shuffle these around so i've got the right kind of orientation for them does the skull need to be close to the asset? I'm trying bones. to find that lip where we had it before. Yeah. Okay, and then just gently push so that it bends around the, the bottle. bottle. That's not... It's all right. It's not straight, that's why. Yeah. Okay, so if I push down now, so that's the hat. So, that's so how are we gonna how are we gonna do the bones then? Do we have we got to cut them? Yes. So, um, can I just lean over? Oh, cheese knife. Cheese knife. So Remember what we're not gonna to have do any cheese. is just slice through. Oh wow! With the cheese knife, and then that now. Oh wow! May I just come and have a... And then I'm just going to gently just push those together. And then you take them off and then glue them on. Well, the thing is, they may actually stay on. With it being there. With it still not being fully... Yeah. Well, we can it's see. It's hard can't enough we? to hold its shape, but it's still soft enough maybe to have a little bit of ad uh, adhesive. Have a look then. Yep. Well, that looks really cool. And the join is brilliant. I mean, it's going to get, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it probably will get painted anyway, but. Smarty so, pants. Need to let that dry and set properly for a good quarter of an hour. Give it, so, give it 25 minutes. We'll have a drink. Yeah, yeah. Have a cup of tea or something, because the kettle has just boiled. Kettle? Warm? No. <laughs> um, and then what we'll do is when we'll go back upstairs and then back to the back to the craft room so i've now brought the bottle back upstairs rather than working in the kitchen because all the rest of my stuff is up here um ian's now sloped back off into his garage <laughs> and left me alone so what i've done is um i've just gone ahead and just given um everything just one coat so far with the tim holtz distress collage medium but i'm not particularly happy with the depth of colour. So what I've done is I've gone in and I've added a little bit more colour into the distress medium and I've given it a good stare to make it just a little bit more browny, a bit more sepia toned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over the whole thing with this stuff and everything's going to start getting a bit more aged a bit more gloopy a bit more distressed and i'm going to start adding in into hello mr nip start adding into the kind of like the nooks and the crannies to, to age it a bit So I'll have to do one side first because obviously I'm holding it in my ends, in my ends. Um, 
and it'll be wet. So this won't be the final coat, obviously, because I will go over it with other distress stuff. Dry brush, add a bit more grunge, grunge, dirt and distress, because when all said and done, <laughs> we are trying to make a Halloween project. So we want it gunky and grimy and grungy and a lot of other words beginning with G. So, right, so that's one side. If I stand it up and just twist it around, maybe I can get to the other end. There you go, you see. Straightforward painting job. So it just adds that kind of vintage, dirty, old feel. And like I said, it wasn't dark enough for me. It was too subtle. So I've gone in and added additional colour. So if you've got like a Distress Reinca, a water-based Reinca, um, you can add to it. Just make sure you give it a good stir. That's covering a lot better. I'm getting more of the sort of colour that I wanted now. Yeah. Much happier. Let me just tilt that. That's better. Much happier with that. Because it doesn't take a long while um, before this starts to kind of dry. Particularly, it's a warm day again here in the UK. and We're still in that kind of heat wave that we're having. Um, so things aren't really taking that long to dry. Which is fortunate. Very, very fortunate. Right, so I'll go away, get this dried off, and then maybe apply another couple of coats just to kind of get that depth of colour that I want. Um, and then I'll be back and I'll show you what I'm going to do with adding some other kind of shadows and distress um, and dirtying it up in the most appropriate places. Okay, back in a little while. <laughs> okay, so it's been a little while, so eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed I've also added uh, a little death's head moth just up at the top, just to add a little bit more interest. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get some brown paint. So this is indigo blue hot cocoa, which is a, a rather lovely kind of browny colour. But I've also got some black gesso. So what I want to do is just take the hot cocoa and just add a little bit. So this is just matte acrylic paint. And I'm just going to just wipe off the excess and just grab some black gesso. And I'm just going to mix the two together. So I'm going to get a darker brown. A darker, darker brown. What I want to do is I'm just going to go around the skull, dabbing in those kind of recessed areas in the teeth. Inside the nasal cavity and also just in the eyes. But before it gets too dry, I'm going to wipe it away. So what that does, it creates that kind of grunge, that old sort of dirt. Should have put some on the chin down there. Bit of clean tissue. And just wipe it away again. It puts like a layer of dirt on. 
just turn around there and just add a bit more at the top there and then swipe off. And that really gives us that kind of old, uh, old bone kind of look. And we'll do the same thing with the Death's Head Moth. Give it a daub with the brown paint and then just before it dries, you can wipe it off. And then all that detail in the moth look is picked out, but it still maintains that kind of um, bone kind of colour. And then we'll do the same thing just on these bones here. So get in as far as we can, grab the tissue and wipe it away. Just like so. so. Try and get into all the kind of recesses, the nooks and crannies. Because we've already put that kind of collage medium on there, it's given us a really, really good base. Somebody's really making a wreck out there today. <laughs> love it, love it. But the fact that it's a very, very warm day today is really not helping because everything's drying ultra quick. But actually, is it helping? <laughs> Probably. There we go. And then tissue, wipe it away, but leave it in the recesses. Lovely. Final bit on this bone. Just leave it for a second or two and then wipe. And then what you can do if you're wanting a bit of extra grunge, like on the teeth. And then maybe just a little wipe across the across the, um, the brow ridge. There we go. Happy with that. Okay, let's just get everything dried off cleaned up and then I'll be right back. Okay so the paint is now all dry. Love that effect, absolutely love it. I just want to add a few other kind of grungy aspects. So if you imagine years and years and years of people holding the bottle, um, it would be dirty on the shoulders and around the neck. So what I want to do is just bring in a little bit of that archival ink, and you're going to need a solvent-based one rather than a water-based one, because the water-based ones will come off on your hands. Whereas the solvent-based ones, once they're dry, they will, um, it will be permanent. So once you've left it to dry, you see how it's just adding a bit more of that kind of brown grunge. particularly kind of like around the bottom where it would be dirtiest. 
and you can dust your um, skull and crossbones if you want to. But what would be fun if you actually wanted to inject a little bit more colour into these projects or this kind of project is you could quite easily just go over and add a hint of, for example, purple or, or green. Just if you wanted to coordinate your, your deco a little bit or even get a bit of orange in there. Um, do I have... I do have a spiced marmalade, so let's have a look, see whether I can just inject a little bit of orange into, into the moth. Just on the body, there you go. And we could always just add a blush, <laughs> if you like, of orange on the cheekbones, maybe just a little bit. Maybe just a light go over on the bones. And then just wait a second or two. And then if you wanted to, you could come in with the green, which I think I will do. So I'm going to leave this just to dry for a second or two. I think it's going to be a case of, um, I don't know when to leave well enough alone, but that's all right. Don't mind that. <laughs> so I'll be back in a little while. <laughs> okay, so as suggested, I've got out some peeled paint, which is the archival. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give Give it a little bit of swamp green. Just going to kind of dab on. You see, it's just starting to tint. I'm not pushing really, really hard. I'm literally just dabbing. So let's just give the chin down here. Oh, look at that. Just adds a little bit of extra kind of depth. Just give some of those bones a little bit of a green, kind of swamp green look. Of course, if you are, you know, you favour kind of purples to to greens, then you know, by all means. <laughs> You can always tailor the colour of your bottle to your Halloween colour theme, if you've got a colour theme going on this year. Because this is solvent basing, when it dries, like I said, it will be permanent. You won't be able to take it off again um, until, or unless you wipe over it with either another ink or a bit of alcohol. So if I want to remove some of that colour from the teeth, to get some alcohol. Q-tip, cotton bud. And then I can make those teeth. I won't say white again because they're not. But just brushing the skull's teeth, look, just to kind of give them a little bit more higher contrast. <laughs> just to remove the green. There you go. OK, I think I'm going to leave it there. So what I want to do is I want to test it as well to see whether or not it looks any good with little sparkly, twinkly, well, maybe not twinkly, but little fairy lights inside it as well. So I'll have a quick tidy up and then I'll go and test it and then I'll put a photograph, a close-up photo of it lit up from the inside at the end of the video. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this spooky bottle. Uh, if you have, 
please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, then you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. And don't forget to hit the bell button because you won't get notifications for future spooky Halloween projects. So that's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel-only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.